Hey everyone, it's Lisa from the blog FarmhouseOnBoon.com and today I'm going to bring to you my fourth Thanksgiving side dish recipe that I've done this year and that is a healthy version of the classic green bean casserole. This is something I've been thinking about for a while. I was trying to think how can I make a green bean casserole that tastes just like the one we're all used to piling on our plates on Thanksgiving and eating with the turkey and the biscuit. And it's just so good, but still has whole ingredients. And I came up with it. We've made this a couple of times now here in our family and it's so delicious. I like to eat Thanksgiving food all season, not just on Thanksgiving. So I'm starting by boiling some fresh green beans. I have a pound of fresh green beans here in my pot. I'm just gonna bring it to a boil and let it simmer for about five minutes and then drain it so that they stay nice and crisp. Now, to officially blanch, I should of course throw them in some ice water, but I am not gonna do that step. I'm just gonna get them to where they're still nice and crispy, but not completely raw. All right, now while those are cooking, I'm gonna start working on my fried onions. Now fried onions are a classic part of green bean casserole. I thought about just bringing a recipe on here where I made some really good, you know, side green beans with garlic and olive oil or something like that. But is it green bean casserole without a cream sauce and fried onions? So to do that, I'm gonna get a cast iron skillet preheating. And then I'm just gonna take a large onion and very thinly slice it. I noticed that the thinner you get these, the more crispy they get. Honestly, I could now, after trying this, just make these for a little snack. All right, now to make my recipes a little bit healthier, I like to, as you know if you follow along, either use sourdough to ferment grains to make them more digestible, or einkorn. And einkorn is an ancient grain. Grain has been modified a lot over the years, and so that's why a lot of people can't tolerate it. So if I can't sour it with my freshly ground grains, I like to use einkorn. So now that I'm frying onions in this, I'm thinking I should totally make some fried chicken with einkorn. I'm gonna get about a half a cup of all-purpose einkorn flour. Really, you could also use like the whole wheat einkorn. I'm gonna use this all-purpose. Two teaspoons of salt. Then a quarter teaspoon each of garlic powder and onion powder, and then some freshly ground black pepper. Now I'm gonna get some coconut oil going here in my skillet. I just want enough so that the onions can fry, so about a half inch or so in my skillet. Now you don't wanna put anything in this to fry until you get a nice sizzle. So usually what I'll do is I'll test one onion and then if I get a really good sizzle, I will start throwing in the rest. Then I just fry them in small batches, a little bit at a time not to overcrowd them. Just gonna give this a good stir and start coating my onions. I like to shake off any excess flour before throwing it into my oil. Alright, I pulled my green beans out and my onions are all nicely fried. That process I thought would stop me from wanting to make this because I was thinking that it would be a little bit more difficult than it was, but it's actually really simple. Next, I'm just going to slice some portobello mushrooms. You could really just use regular mushrooms too. I just love the taste of the portobello. Just one package and get them going in two tablespoons of butter in my cast iron skillet. All right, that's way too hot. After the mushrooms are nicely sauteed, a little bit soft after a couple minutes, I'm gonna add four tablespoons of einkorn. Now I start by adding in any leftover einkorn from my onions, if you have any, throw that in there first. Might as well not waste it. And then the additional to get up to the four tablespoons. 
obviously, as you can see, and you know if you watch, I never take specifics too seriously, but I did test this recipe for four tablespoons if you like very, very specifics. Just going to kind of make a roux here with the butter and the flour. And then I'm gonna add in a cup of broth. I recommend chicken broth. I had beef broth going in my Instant Pot today. So this is beef broth, but chicken or turkey broth would be the ideal choice. If you have neither on hand, just some water will work. So don't let that stop you from making this recipe, although homemade broth is of course delicious. I have tried this with just plain old water, it works great. But if you're using some store-bought broth and it's salted, you might need to adjust the salt because I am giving instructions for all these ingredients having no prior salt added. Now I'm gonna just kind of let that simmer for about five minutes. Then I'm gonna add in about two teaspoons of salt. And a cup of heavy cream. And just let that cook on low and stir until it thickens a bit. Now it will thicken more when it's baking. Then I'm just going to pour my sauce onto my green beans and top it with the fried beans. Right now I'm just going to pop this into a 400 degree oven for 15 minutes. And that is how you make green bean casserole from scratch. Make sure to go grab my free ebook. I have my five from scratch Thanksgiving side dish recipes in one ebook so you can download it to your phone and then just have it all in one place if you're going to be hosting or cooking on Thursday or just to use year round. These are delicious comfort foods that you can use throughout the season. A few notes on this recipe. The first time I made it, I did not have any coconut oil on hand, but I did have avocado oil. So that is also an option, it worked perfectly. So you can substitute avocado oil for coconut oil. I would not recommend substituting olive oil as it really should be cooked at a very high heat. Also, like I said, you can use water instead of broth. That tastes delicious. It's just so creamy and good. I absolutely love this recipe. Some other recipes that you can find on my YouTube channel from this year are my homemade cranberry sauce, my sourdough stuffing, and my sweet potato casserole, all perfect for Thanksgiving. I will leave a link in the description below for that ebook. It is bit.ly slash Thanksgiving from scratch to grab that. All right, well, if you're brand new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I make two new videos every week on food from scratch, natural living, and a handmade home. Thank you so much for stopping by the farmhouse.